Jesus is master over everything that exists. Therefore, we should submit our lives to him. So picture this. Imagine that you get a phone call, and to your astonishment, you hear the person on the other end of the line say, please hold for the president. And then the president of the United States gets on the line and says, hey, I've got something that I need you to do. Now, regardless of your political views, I think most of us would say, absolutely, sir, I am on it. Why? Well, because it's the president asking, and he's in charge, right? And we see a very similar response in our online Sunday school lesson from Matthew chapter 8, verses 23 through 34. In this passage, we're treated to two different scenes from Christ's ministry, and both of these scenes demonstrate Christ's authority and power. In our last Sunday school lesson, we learned that large crowds of people had begun to follow Jesus around, hoping to hear more of his teaching and to see him perform miracles. Many sick people came to Jesus, hoping to be healed. Jesus cared very much for all of the people, but he became tired and needed to get some sleep. You see, even though Jesus was God, he was still limited by the fact that he was human. And of course, humans need to eat, to drink, to rest, and they need sleep. And Jesus was no different. But there were so many people following him that he decided the best place to go to get away for some rest was on a boat. So Jesus and his disciples took a boat out into the Sea of Galilee. And while they were on their way to the other side of the sea, a great big storm came upon them suddenly. And the disciples started to freak out because the wind and the waves had started battering the boat. I mean, water was pouring in over the sides. They were getting drenched. The disciples feared that their boat might get overturned. And if that happened, they would likely drown. The disciples became so frightened, in fact, that they feared for their lives. They knew that Jesus could perform miracles, but he wasn't helping them or, or doing anything about it. So they went to Jesus, and what was Jesus doing? He was sleeping. So they woke him up, and they cried out, Save us, Lord, for we are perishing. I mean, these guys were freaking out. Jesus looked at them, and he was like, <laughs> Guys, guys, why are you so afraid? Your faith is too small. Now, it's not like they didn't have any faith. After all, they did come to Jesus. They called him Lord. They recognized that he did have the power to save them, but they were obviously very troubled. And so what did Jesus do? He stood up and he said to the storm, peace, be still. And what happened? Well, immediately the wind and the waves, they died down. And the disciples were amazed by what Jesus had done, and they remarked, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? It's an awestruck response. The disciples were amazed at Jesus' ability to stop the storm. They knew that Jesus was powerful, but they were stunned by his power over nature. He had performed many miracles in front of them, but the reality is that they were still learning that Jesus was, in fact, God in human flesh. I mean, right before their eyes, Jesus demonstrated his authority over the natural world. He was in charge, and he proved that he was God. So what happened next? Well, they got across the sea, they got out of their boats, and they began traveling. And as they did, these two demon-possessed men came upon them. And these men, they were, they were acting wildly. They, they were violent. Everyone who lived in the area knew about these men and were afraid of them. People didn't go anywhere near them. But, of course, Jesus wasn't afraid. When he came near, the demons spoke through the men, and they yelled out to Jesus, What business do we have with each other, Son of God? Instantly, these demons recognized who Jesus was, and they knew that he had authority over them, that he was in charge, and that they would have to obey whatever Jesus told them to do. So they begged him not to send them to their eternal judgment before it was time. They pleaded with him saying, if you cast us out, permit us to go away into that herd of swine. There were about 2,000 pigs nearby. And in response to their plea, Jesus said, go. They were to leave the men that they were possessing. And so the demon, they left the men and they took possession of the pigs. And when they did that, the pigs went crazy. They ran down a steep hill and fell off the cliff into the sea. 
the pigs all died in the water. Now, the keepers of the pigs, they saw all of this, and they were amazed. They ran into the city and told everybody what they had seen. The men who had been possessed, they looked different. They were dressed properly, and they weren't acting crazy anymore. Jesus had shown that he had power over demons, which are supernatural beings. In both of these in incidents, Jesus demonstrated how powerful he is. He has power over natural things, the things of this earth, like the storm he commanded. He has power over supernatural things, the things of the spiritual, spiritual world, like demons. Only God could have such power. By calming the storm and casting out demons, Jesus was demonstrating that he is God. Jesus is master over everything that exists. Therefore, we should submit our lives to him. So what are the lessons for us from this passage? How should we respond to what we've learned? Well, boys and girls, moms and dads, I would encourage you to repeat this phrase over and over again. Jesus is in charge. Jesus is in charge. We need to understand that he is God. And as God, he has the authority to command obedience not just in the natural world, not just in the supernatural world, but in our lives as well. Jesus is in charge. And the fact that he's in charge means that we have some choices to make. For those of you that haven't yet trusted Christ, well, you need to understand that you have been commanded by scripture to obey the gospel. And you need to respond in faith by choosing to embrace Christ as the only one who can forgive your sins. You need to place your faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ as your only hope of heaven. You need to obey the gospel. For those of us that have already trusted Christ, well, you need to think about this. If the natural world obeys Jesus, if the supernatural world obeys Jesus, then what right have we, as people who call ourselves followers of Christ, what right do we have to disobey Jesus? The answer to that, of course, is none at all. We'll talk more about that in one of the Living Our Lesson videos coming up later this week. For now, let's pray and thank the Lord for his power. Heavenly Father, we praise you for this incredible passage of scripture which tells us about Jesus' mastery over the, the natural world in calming this storm. Thank you for Jesus' demonstration that by speaking a few words into the storm, that it could be calmed. Lord, thank you for what this passage also teaches us about Jesus' mastery over the supernatural world. He was able to command those demons, not through some kind of crazy incantation, but he, simply to tell them to leave those men, and they left. He has power over the natural world and the supernatural world, and that means, Lord, that he has the power and authority to command our lives. Lord, I would pray for any boy or girl, any mom or dad who would be listening to this video right now that hasn't yet chosen to submit their lives to Jesus. Maybe they've heard the message. Maybe they've heard about his power. Maybe they've even heard the story of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, but they've never chosen to embrace Christ personally as Savior and as Lord. Lord, I pray that you would help them to cry out in submission and obedience to the gospel. Lord, I pray that you would help them to exercise faith, to believe in Jesus, and to ask him to be the Lord of their lives. For the rest of us that have chosen to place our trust in Christ, Lord, I pray that our lives would demonstrate our desire to be obedient to Jesus with every choice that we make. Lord, we're in a time where uh, many of us are facing situations that are uncommon to our lives. And oftentimes, when we're in uncommon situations, we start behaving in ways that are designed to please ourselves. Lord, I pray that you would help us as followers of Christ to make it our chief goal in life to bring honor and glory to you, to submit to the one who has power over the natural world and over the supernatural world. Would you help us? to submit our lives to Jesus on a choice-by-choice -choice basis. We ask all of these things in the wonderful name of Christ. Well, that is all for our video today. Until next time, keep pleasing the Lord.